All right, uh, this story leads. The Democratic Alliance is expected to announce a new federal council chairperson after 155 delegates of a council meeting vote this morning. Let's get the very latest now. Natasha Piri is uh, covering the story for us. Natasha, very good morning to you, or afternoon rather, once again. Any minute from now, we should know who the new federal council chair is. Well, Blaine, we should know, but not as yet. Uh, they just said, or rather Mabine Siab actually sent a communicate to journalists here saying that the briefing will be delayed as the agenda is actually moving slower than usual. So, I mean, uh, this room is actually full and packed of journalists, uh, you know, just anxiously mm. uh, waiting for that announcement that could happen any time after 12 o'clock. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see um, as, as, as to who will actually emerge victorious from that position. You know, when you mention delays, it just piques the interests of journalists. Uh, what are you hearing? What's the possible reason for the delay other than it's just taking that much longer? Mm. Well, we do know that voting actually had uh, concluded. Um, we're still going to he hear the outcomes of, the, uh, of those results, I beg your pardon. But we also were told earlier on by Sonny Malati that we were still deliberating on the organizational review report, of which uh, you know, he cited that uh, certain things need, needed uh, to be decided upon. Of course, uh, yesterday we heard from Sonny Malati saying that uh, party leader um, Musi Maimain had actually asked for an early uh, policy conference as well as an early elective conference. So, uh, think uh, it actually has uh, something to do with that. So he basically, Musimai Mani that is, basically reiterating this call for uh, this, this early uh, Congress as well as the policy conference. How did that go down uh, where you are? Definitely, Blaney actually did reiterate that call. Uh, Sonny wouldn't go into much detail as to how that actually went down. All he actually told us earlier on was that deliberations were actually still underway as to that matter. We also do know that uh, a new replacement for the former CEO, Paul Bowie, actually, um, you know, is still also underway. The matter is also still being discussed. So I think a lot of things actually on the agenda, a lot of deliberations on the agenda that need to be actually, you know, finally settled. And then uh, that is when, you know, the DA leadership and the new fed FEDCO uh, Council Chair will actually then brief the media on the outcomes of the meeting. You know, for our viewers that have just joined us, uh, this, this voting process is uh, very interesting, uh, Natasha. Uh, it's, it's basically contenders that are ranked by, by preference. Uh, just recap for us, uh, how does it work? Definitely, Blaine. Quite a very confusing voting process. I mean, so my lights actually went into detail, uh, you know, earlier on. But we are told that this is an STV system, so a single transferable vote. So uh, there are four main contenders, as, as you know, uh, Ethel Trollope, Helen Zilla, Thomas uh, Walters, and of course, Mike Waters. And of course, this is a ranking system. So, uh, you know, every, uh, every member or every candidate will actually, actually get a vote. Uh, so they vote from, you know, number one to, to actually number number four in, over, in order of that preference. I mean, it's quite a confusing process. I myself can't even get the, <laughs> my head around it. But of course, uh, that is a confusing STV uh, vote process. But we actually told that, you know, voting has actually concluded. And of course, any time from now, you can expect the DA leadership to actually announce who the new federal council chairperson uh, is. Let's just talk, uh, Natasha, about this position. Many say this is a very strategic uh, position in the Democratic Alliance. Uh, what do we know about it and how important is it? Well, it's a very, very powerful position. I mean, just to sum it up in, you know, just a, a few words, I mean, this is the engine of the party. Uh, so... Uh, whoever will be elected into this position will actually be holding a very powerful uh, position that actually deals to the day-to-day -day basis, the running of the DA administration and policy making, uh, you know, of the party. So any minute from now, we should know what's happening uh, there with regards to the federal council uh, chair. But uh, the party is also looking, uh, Natasha, for a replacement of its CEO. What sort of reasons, what were the mm. reasons we were given uh, with regard to the re resignation of the CEO? Well, remember, according to reports, there was mounting pressure for uh, Musi Maimain to step down as party leader. And, of course, the CEO for, uh, you know, their role or under their tenure uh, 
um, you know, those, those, the, the blows that were actually dealt uh, by the May 8 elections, not only that, the by-elections as well. So you saw Paul Bowie there stepping down and tendering in, in his resignation, I beg your pardon, on Thursday. And of course, um, the party leadership, they reiterating yesterday that a new replacement actually should be found for him. But of course, Musi Maimani had said in times past that he's going nowhere. He will still remain as the DA leader. All right, Natasha, thank you very much indeed for your reporting. We'll check back with you in a short